Hello everyone and welcome to Flickering Myth. My name is EJ Marino and as part of my Sundance 2021 coverage, we're talking about one of the darkest comedies I've seen in quite some time. We're diving into On the Count of Three. Have you ever had a best friend that you would do anything for? I mean anything, like maybe do a weird like joint let's off ourselves kind of pack together? Yeah, so that's what this movie is about. Two best friends with two guns decide at the end of the day, they're going to end it all. But their day gets a little weird, a little wonky, a little hilarious, and really, really bleak. This is one of those movies that is really going to polarize some people. The blatant nihilism in this film is hard to swallow. This is not a happy-go-lucky movie. Even when the characters are laughing and having a good time, it is still just clouded by a dark, like, shadow. It's just, it's a, it's a hard film, but I will say I really liked On the Count of Three. It made me laugh out loud a couple times. It made me think. It made me feel some things. It was just a roller coaster ride. Actually, in a weird way, it reminded me of a Greek tragedy. A tragedy in general, where you're just like, you know those Greek tragedies where you're like, Okay, I'm starting off and I just know the end of this is not going to be good, but I will go with these characters through this journey. It reminds me of like a Safdie Brothers movie where it's like maybe like uncut gems where you know the end is not going to be positive. You just are there for the journey. That's what this reminded me of. I knew the end goal. They made it very clear when they were talking about it, but you know, there's some surprises do happen along the way, but yeah, you just know this is going to be a bleak film, but something about these two actors, something about the way it's directing, it was just easy to handle and easy to swallow. I had a good time watching this. Yeah, a movie about like two friends trying to maybe kill themselves is uh, not a, a fun, light viewing, but it was still something enjoyable. I was still invested and sucked into these characters, and I had a good time. I don't recommend this for everyone, but I do say I think this is one of my favorite ones I've seen out of all of Sundance. Gerald Carmichael has been working in this industry for a while as an actor, but his feature film debut is one of my favorites I've seen in a little bit. This is a filmmaker who seems confident in their style and what they want to say. It's hard to see a young filmmaker just come onto the scene and just go, here's what I want to do, here's what I want to say, and I just really enjoy it. He acts fantastically in this film as well. I will personally say the co-lead in this movie, Christopher Abbott, steals the show, he eats it up. Christopher Abbott is becoming that indie darling that you hire, and your movie is just getting elevated a little bit more. I think of Possessor, I think of Black Bear, I think of Piercing. There are so many movies that he's in that I'm like, yes, you're just eating it up, and this is another great example. There's a scene where he's just screaming Last Resort by Papa Roach. Yes, Papa Roach is in this movie. Yes, so you will hear it a couple times, but it's just really interesting to see that emotional moment where he's screaming and letting out all his emotions, and I'm just like, let it out, please. Maybe if you would have let this out sooner, we would not be at the point we are now, which is something both actors deliver very well. This whole message that I walked away with is face your demons before you become that demon. If you don't address the mental health issues you are dealing with early on in life, it's just going to manifest and be eviler and just corrupt you. And that's what this film did to these guys. I really wanted to just give them a hug. This made me want to call some of my best guy friends and be like, are you okay? And I think that's what I think this movie was trying to say. Men's mental health, especially in America, is not the most well-respected. It's kind of like, you're a tough man. Get over it. You can get over anything. Like, even if you were bad stuff happened to you as a kid, you could still get over it. You're a guy. That's not always true. A couple characters were just like, I mean, Tiffany Haddish has a character uh, in here where she's telling uh, like Gerald's character, like, yo, go to therapy. Talk to somebody. And that's all this movie was telling me. It's just talk to somebody. Let these emotions out and maybe you wouldn't be trying to make a joint suicide pact with your best friend. Maybe. The only real negatives I have for this movie is I do think the cinematography is a little weak. I'm glad they didn't go for like this neon stylized aesthetic. I'm glad they weren't trying to copy other filmmakers in this kind of drama, tragedy, like action-y kind of comedy. I don't know. I'm just glad they, they made their own look to it, but I do think it's a little flat. I do think the camera work could have been a little bit more impressive. I think they could have 
pushed it over the line just a little bit. I also think the script does get a little repetitive. They're kind of going to different locations and they're just running into weird situations. And I'm like, I could have maybe done without one or two of them. It was just okay. I just, uh, I think the pacing just threw me off a tiny bit. I love the banter between the guys. I like spending time with them, but sometimes we would do something and I'm like, okay, uh, maybe because again, I, I kind of knew where this was heading and I was just like, maybe we could just get to that point so I could just like breathe. I could not breathe through some of this movie. I was just very tense. Again, I was laughing. I was having a good time. These guys back and forth reminds me of me and my best friend. So I got that. But sometimes I was just like, please, can we just get to what the end goal is so I can just relax and see how I feel? This movie's stressful, and I, I, I think that's part of the script. But yes, if I could have just maybe upped the cinematography and polished that script a little bit more, this could have been a perfect score for me. It's just under that. It's, it's really, really good, but I think it could have been even better. On the Count of Three is one of Sundance's most interesting, most polarizing, most talked about films, and I can see why. I had a great time watching it, and I had loved, loved reviewing this for everyone today. So, all right, guys, what did you think of my review? Let me know down in the comments below. Subscribe to Flickering Myth, because we make videos like this every single week, and give me a thumbs up if you've liked our Sundance coverage. All right, everyone, let's talk about this bleak but funny movie down below.